Good evening, everybody, um, and uh, thank you again, councillors. Welcome to the council meeting this evening. May I also extend a warm welcome to members of the public who are watching our webcast. I would like to remind members of how I intend to deal with the COVID team this evening. Understanding all the nine of the council procedure rules, I do intend to say break this evening and I hold a 10 minute adjournment probably point during the meeting between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. When three hours have elapsed after the commencement of the meeting I shall interrupt the meeting and the member speaking must immediately cease speaking and sit down. The meeting shall then dispose of the item then under consideration as it is the motion that the question be now put had been carried. We will then vote on that and any remaining items moving on. Declarations of interest. Members are asked to consider whether you have any disclosable, pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting and if so, to declare it and state the nature of such business. Can I remind members that the Constitution and Standards Committee approved a dispensation for all members in relation to the National Health Service and the Integrated Care System Reorganisation. A note was circulated to all members on Friday which addressed this point as well as other aspects of the procedural rules for this meeting that I have asked to be sent out. Now, if you wish to defer any interest you wish to declare? Yes. Can you stand up, please? Point one, Mr. Mayor. We can't hear you properly, so there's a technical issue, so you need to know that, because obviously Sorry. you can't realise that you're cutting out slightly and stuff like that. Sorry. And I was as well. Okay. Can you hear me now? There's a lot I can do. I didn't put the mic there. I'm sorry. I did. Evidently, that one works. That one works. <laughs> um, evidently, it's to do with Wi-Fi. If people have got Wi-Fi's on, then it takes the some of the sound of the mics. But if you can hear me now, you're all okay. That's fantastic. Um, mayor's, announcement, sorry, mayor's announcements. I've been notified of the following apologies. Uh, I haven't. Uh, can anyone, are there any apologies for tonight, please? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Sharon Coates. Councillor. Yeah, okay. I now propose um, at this point um, to propose a minute of silence. Um, thank you, members. I would like to invite you all now to stand and join me for a minute's silence in memory of Councillor Andy Corkle and former Councillor Mayor Alderman Jerry Ellis and of course the tragic accident that happened at the weekend with Sir David Amos MP.
Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Stand up, please. Can I just explain to all councillors tonight? When you want to speak, please stand up and come to me. Someone sitting down there, it could be any one of you speaking, because all I've got is a mic. Thank you. Can you hear me? From here? I can hear you. Mr. Mayor, um, I appreciate that was a slip of the tongue, but I could I just make sure that the minutes reflect that it wasn't a tragic accident that happened to Sir David Amos. It was actually a murder. I appreciate you didn't mean anything, but if the minutes could reflect that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> can I invite Councillor Brown to speak, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, for allowing me the opportunity to say a few words to my friend and ward colleague, Councillor Andy Corkill. I realise that uh, many members will not have known Andy well, and some will never have had the fortune of meeting him at all. Andy Corkill was a um, Birkenhead man through and through. He attended Oxton, St. Saviour's Primary School, later went to Royal Grammar, then on to university. As a young lad, he played for the Glenavon Junior Football Club. And he was elected as an Oxton councillor in 2019, with, I have to say, a larger share of the vote than Councillor Kelly or myself ever achieved. So he was only a member of this council for two years and five months. And of course, for much of last year, we weren't meeting at all, or then meeting virtually via Teams. And this year, Andy's health had deteriorated to such an extent that he was unable to attend meetings. I first met Andy when he joined the Liberal Democrats in 2015 as part of an influx of new members that year. From the outset, Andy stood out as someone who really wanted to make a difference. I remember the first time he came out knocking on doors with me, when he told me a little about the cancer that had first struck when he was just 19 and that kept recurring periodically. He never complained about the cruel hand that fate had dealt him. Quite the contrary, Andy was unfailingly positive. He was determined to make the most of whatever time was given to him. Everyone liked Andy Corkill. I never heard him utter an unkind word, and people enjoyed his company. In politics, he said that he was driven by three E's, equality, Europe, and above all, the environment. He had been involved in environmental campaigns long before he became a councillor. And Mr. Mayor, we all feel a little apprehensive before making a maiden speech in the council, and Andy was no exception. He wanted to speak in our debate about declaring a climate emergency. And he asked me to look over what he planned to say. He was worried it might not be quite right. He had nothing to worry about. It was an excellent speech. And I would like to remind members of just a few things that he had to say. This motion is absolutely pointless unless it is accompanied by policy proper, workable, progressive, immediate policy. We must grab the initiative. We must stand on the right side of history. We have the power not just to declare this emergency, but to use it as a springboard for a proper policy, for workable policy. We must work on this together across the chamber. Remember, it's not about stopping people doing things. It's about getting them to do things differently. And Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure if Her Majesty watches webcasts from Wirral Council, 
but she seemed to be echoing some of Andy's ideas in her overheard conversation last week, that we need to stop talking about the climate mm -hmm. emergency and acting. Andy Corkill has so much more to offer. His contribution to this council was all too short. The final motion that he brought forward was to our virtual meeting last December, a proposal titled Getting Cancer Services Back on Track. Most members may not have appreciated the personal experience that drove him to propose this, but I'm pleased to recall that the motion received unanimous support. Shortly afterwards, the spectre of cancer came back once again. What Andy went through this year was unspeakably cruel. But he tried to remain positive. We all hoped there would be a miracle. It never came. The Liberal group would like to thank members from all parties and many officers for the kind messages of sympathy. In due course, we will need to consider how we will commemorate Andy's all too short life. But for now, we offer our deepest and sincere sympathy to his mum, Angela, to his brother and sister, sister Chris and Sophie, and to his partner and fiancée, Paola, who had been with Andy for 12 years and who was with him and his mum when he slipped away from us all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you very much indeed for that, Alan. That's a very, very touching and uh, well thought out speech. Thank you. Um, would any other member like to speak? Tom. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it, it's been a really sad time for colleagues over the uh, past few weeks. Uh, Wirral's lost two dear friends. Um, Councillor Andy Corkill and Alderman Ellis, and not to mention the shocking murder of, of David Amos. And I'd just like to associate and make a few comments on my group, if I could have your indulgence, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, I first had the pleasure of working with Andy when he was a spokesman on the Tourism, Communities, Culture and Leisure Committee when I was a chair. And I remember giving him a quick call over an item that I can't remember now. And we ended up talking for over an hour. And we covered Brexit, politics in Wirral, and his mayoral campaign. And that won't be a surprise. We didn't agree on everything, especially over Europe. But I was left in no doubt about his passion, his desire to serve, and to make our area a better place. He was warm, friendly, and articulate. And Wirral is poorer without his contributions, his passion, and his drive. And so on behalf of the Conservative group, I'd like to pass on our deepest condolences to Andy's friends, families, colleagues and residents. And Mr Mayor, I was also deeply saddened to hear about <coughs> Alderman Ellis's passing. Jerry was one of life's true gentlemen, always polite, always witty and always friendly. As a young councillor, Jerry always took the time to ask me how I was doing, give me sage words for advice and usually to gossip about the group opposite and always had a tale to tell me whenever I saw him. I'll particularly miss his infectious and mischievous manner. And I think some of my favourite moments of the council chamber, Mr Mayor, was Jerry standing up over the years, telling off various leaders. And he did it in such a witty way that you could see the hidden smirks on the members opposite that became more and more apparent until we all burst out laughing. And Jerry did serve the world for 21 years and lastly as mayor, which in a position I know he enjoyed very much. He just loved meeting people and I was remembering for his kindness and his support to me personally so on behalf of the Conservative group um, I'd like to extend um, thank everybody for their condolences and their good wishes and extend that on to Jerry's family and especially his wife Maggie he will be missed thank you Mr Mayor Okay. 
Finally, to assist councillors this evening, a supplementary agenda pack has been published and I will ask councillors to refer to that pack during consideration of any amendments to motions to be discussed. Mr Mayor, I'd like to have your indulgence for a moment. What I would like to ask is <coughs> to adjust the order of the meeting tonight because we have so many members of the public at the back of the hall who are obviously here for one reason. If we could move the uh, notice of motion, item two, the Spartina, Anglica, risks to the northwest, if we could move that to the front so it could be heard and spoken upon. And then perhaps the members of the public, after that, they can leave the room if they want, and it'll save them sitting through the whole course of the meeting. So I know, I know we do this in planning where, considering how many members of the public are here, we bring that item to the front. So if we could do that, I think it would be courteous to the members of the public here tonight. Thank you. Just um, while I'm thinking, I, I, I have thoughts about it already, Andy, but we are only going to be two minutes and we'll be at that point. So if you don't mind, I'd like to stay just with where we are because it is only going to be the public will have two minutes to wait at all now at this moment. Sorry? Oh, then it's motions. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, never, I thought you were talking. I thought you were talking about the questions. Yes, tonight. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I was putting my hand up to uh, give a statement, and I wasn't sure whether or not I was. This was the appropriate point to do that. Mr Mayor, I'm not sure what the leader's statement will be about or whether it fits in with the issue of Hoylake. If we were to Some bring state. the Hoylake matter forward yeah. for the debate, I would merely ask that members take an appropriate time for it and it isn't packed with lots of speakers when there are no other no. items we might work that. through. No. I, I personally believe we should just progress as we are um, we're going to get to it, we're going to debate it and everything else, so it won't be long. And it, what we're doing now is taking up time, and there's more standing up now, Councillor Bird's choice. So Mr. if you don't mind, um, I'm going to make a decision, and I'm going to say we carry on with what we're doing at this present moment in time till we get to it. Thank you. Mr Mayor, if that's the case, and to ensure that we do get to the uh, item that the residents are here for, can we suspend the guillotine then, please? Three hours of discussion, and we will fit that in. No problem at all. So please, it's down to the members sitting here whether you want to keep on talking like this and wasting time as we're going through. So please, let's concentrate on what we're doing. Thank you. Mr Mayor, I do believe that making that request for the public is not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. No, thank you. Thank you. We Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, if I'm not mistaken, I think if the call has been made to suspend the guillotine, it goes to a vote. So I'm sure legal counsel can advise. Put it to the vote. Do you know what? We're just wasting time there. If we've got a proposer and a second there for that. Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We put it to the vote. All those in favour, please show. Can you please put your hands down, please, at the back? You're not involved in this meeting tonight. Please keep your hands down. Right. And all those against, please. Split. 
place in the green group for this. <coughs> Any abstentions, please? No? <clears throat> and that is for 27 and against 34. So that is lost. Thank you. At this point, I think it just sums it up. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wasn't sure whether it was appropriate, and I certainly didn't want to talk when my colleagues were speaking about their their colleagues who've passed. Um, it was just to say we've all been absolutely horrified by last week's events, and our thoughts are with David Amos's family at this moment. The motivation for the senseless killing is not clear, and not for us tonight. But what is clear is that it was an attack on the very heart of democracy. And that leads me on to a broader point, but related. Decency, civility and compassion in public life. We're all here to achieve the same goal, to make residents' lives better. We may not always agree how that can be achieved, but that is why we became politicians. And that's why the council exists. And that's why our officers work tirelessly for the greater good. For too long it's been the norm, the culture, to personalise issues, to be rude, unreasonable and inconsiderate. Aggression and abuse from some residents, including racism, intimidation and personal insults to both elected members and officers. We see poor behaviour from members and it's not good enough. I know this doesn't apply to the vast majority of people here, I really do know that, but it is happening too often. A change in the constitution will not bring any improvements if we do not change our culture. I'm asking residents to have patience and understanding. We're all trying as hard as we can. You may not always get the response you like or as quickly as you'd like it, but your elected representatives are trying their best under enormously challenging conditions. We are not here for you to abuse and denigrate. I'm asking members to respect each other and respect our officers who have gone above and beyond to bring us through a pandemic. They are trying their best. We are trying our best. Mr Mayor, colleagues, another one of our MPs has lost their life in the cruelest way possible. And I can't imagine what his family are going through. The image of him with his family and his dogs is beyond heartbreaking and is actually seared into my memory. My plea is this. Let's take some time to appreciate each other and be kind, or at least civil and respectful. We all want the best outcomes for Wirral. Like Joe Cox five years ago, we have witnessed the horrific mur murder of a hard-working and con caring constituency MP doing what they love best, serving their constituents. And on that note, I'd personally like to thank all of our MPs, but in particular, our four local MPs for all their hard work and dedication to Wirral. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Item three, the minutes. Um, turning to item three, we are asked to approve the minutes of the council meeting held on the 6th of September, 2021. I will move approval of these minutes as a true record. Do I have a seconder? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I do have one small correction to the minutes. Yeah, it's item 39, where it says right at the beginning, Councillor Harry Gorman moved the motion on low traffic neighbourhoods. On the night, it was actually myself who moved the motion. Thank you. Okay. Um, is that agreed? with that change to notion, okay? Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, now then. 
<coughs> Members, I can report that the five public questions uh, in the public and qu members' questions um, note, please note, 30 minutes time limit. Members, I can report that five public questions have been submitted this evening. Four of the questionnaires have asked that I read the questions out on their behalf. I will ask Mr McCourt to do that shortly. Can I remind those questionnaires present that they have two minutes to put their question and for members that they have two minutes to answer. So the first question is from Sam Coleman and the question is to Councillor Jeanette Williamson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the question is, following a local referendum, the Neighbourhood Development Plan uh, NDP for Hoylake was agreed to, and this is administered by Hoylake Vision. As outlined in the proposal, the NDP explicitly does not include beach management. The Hoylake Vision website states all the clear priority goals from the referendum, including outdoor space for recreation and activities in Hoylake, particularly along the promenade. The section is entitled, We Have Consensus. In the years since the referendum, their primary priority seems instead to have been to campaign for a cessation to beach management, thereby removing the amenity beach, which was previously a much valued area for recreation. This is concerning for two reasons. One, it is outside the remit of a neighborhood forum and Hoylake Vision therefore has no mandate to act or seek to influence beach management issues. Two, there is no majority support for this. In fact, a 12,000 strong petition in favor of beach management suggests that the consensus among the community is for beach management. Mr. Coleman asks that the council outline clearly and concisely the situations in which a neighborhood forum can be stripped of its privilege to deliver an NDP as a national initiative, there must be both clear limits to the power of such a forum and legal ramifications for acting outside their explicit remit. Would, for example, a vote of no confidence by residents in Hoylake Vision necessitate the winding up of the forum? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Written response will be sent to Mr Coleman. Question two, Wayne Verdeck. Question to Councillor Liz Gray. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so from uh, Mr. Wayne <coughs> Verkade, and forgive us if we mispronounce his name. Devon and Cornwall and North Wales councils understand the importance of raking and maintaining their beaches and keeping them clean and safe for locals and visitors alike to use and enjoy. They appreciate the importance of encouraging and supporting visitors equals tourism equals a boost to the local and regional economy. Wirral was once known as the Leisure Peninsula and was a popular tourism destination and with some imagination, investment and planning could be so again. So why with these assets locally does this council persist in not helping but harming its small businesses with policies which do not attract Indeed, they deter visitors and spending in the local economy. Mr. Vergade's question to this council, as a business owner himself in the tourism sector, trying to recover after the pandemic, is why is B Wirral Borough Council seemingly unable to recognize the importance of tourism and act for the benefit of visitor tourism and the economy of Wirral as a whole? Councillor is great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a written response will be sent. Mr. Mayor, can I have a question that these written responses are actually copied into members as well so we can see what's being said, please? Attorney, okay. Mr. Mayor, point of order, if I may. Um, these are notices that have been submitted, questions that have been submitted in time um, for answers at council. Um, so, in that question, why are we giving written responses? Didn't members have adequate time? to collate a response and get the answer because it just cares to see that residents get an answer tonight and they've come along to hear it. Mm. 
I think uh, that you had your answer, Tom, that they are both going to respond back, and that can be done. And as just been asked by Councillor Cox, can members see the copies that come back out? And if that happens, then we've fulfilled our duty, or they have. Thank you. Question three. Again, um, Nicola Verdake. 